Welcome back, one and all. We're working on our Unity tutorial, and a student of mine has made me aware of this great GUI Git application called Source Street. So we're going to take a little mini break from our Unity development. We're going to download this app, and I'll show you how to configure it and set it up for tracking your uh, GitHub and Bitbucket repositories using this. So I, I'm going to go ahead and agree to it. I'm going to download the software. While that's downloading, one of the things I want to point out is that it's going to, it's going to require that you have a Bitbucket account. If you don't have a Bitbucket account, I want to point this out what you can do. And you can do this at any stage. If I go to download this and run it, it'll, uh, it'll pop up and it will prompt me to use an account from Bitbucket. So let me just show you. If you don't have a Bitbucket account, just click Login. And I know you're like, wait a minute, I've never logged in before. Well, click Login with Google. And then um, I'm going to pick an account that I don't currently have. So I pick an email. And it says right here that there's my email address, but I haven't signed up for it. So at this point, what I can do is click Sign Up for Bitbucket Cloud using that email. So I click on here. And as long as I can find a username that is unique, it will let me set this up. Now, I already have an account, so I'm not going to do that, but I wanted you to see that it's a very simple process, and you can use a Google login, or you could do it old school. You can click the Get Started and come up with your own way of doing this. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead, and I'll log in later. I'm going to go ahead and open this up, and let's, let's get this thing running and installing. So here it is, source tree. And if you already have a GitHub or Bitbucket account, or maybe you have both like I do, that's okay. This will still work. So uh, we're going to click on Install. Notice we have to register through Bitbucket. So I'm going to click Bitbucket here. Now it's going to want me to log in and give permission. So the first thing I want to do is log in with my actual account, which is the 100 Visions guy. And so let me go ahead and click Log Out and then Log In again. So here's my Bitbucket account, um, and I'm logged in. So now I'm going to go over here, and let's see if it lets me do this. I'm going to go back a step and click Bit Bitbucket again. And now we're on here. Um, it's going to ask. It may ask you to authorize this app to use. So I'm going to see if that works. Okay, for whatever reason, it it was weird. It, it didn't notice. I went back. I'm here. It says registration complete. So as long as you do that, you should be good. I'm going to click on next. Now on install tools, you do not need Mercurial. That's a, that's like Git. It's a different version control software. You don't need that. For advanced options, I am going to configure this automatic line ending handling because I always get those errors on Git bash and it's annoying. And then configure global, ignore. I'm just going to skip that for now because I don't understand it. And I skip what I don't understand. Click next. Now, my username, my email, I'm going to go ahead and set those here. And I'm going to click on next. And now it's going to install. It asks if I have an SSH key that I'd like to load now. If not, you can click no and create one later if you like. Now, on my private Bitbucket repository, I use an SSH key. I don't have it on this computer, so I'm going to have to configure that later. So for now, I'm just going to click on No. I'm going to go to that. Okay, so when you first open this up, you'll see something like this. Local repositories, all repos, blah, 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 blah. All right, um, we have a couple um, options here. Local means on my computer. Remote. Right now, it shows me Bitbucket. It shows me all of my repositories that are on Bitbucket. So I told you I was going to be doing the Unity one. So I want to find the Bitbucket one that has the Unity scrolling shooter. So I can just type in here, scrolling, hit enter, scrolling platformer, 2D, Unity scrolling platformer. So I got several of these. These are different branches. Okay, so I'm just going to grab this particular one. And I don't have a copy of it, so I need to clone it. So I need to just basically find a folder to put this in. Right now, it's going to go into my Documents folder. If I want to change that, I would change that here. That's the name of the repo. Uh, everything looks good. I'm just going to go ahead and click Clone. I should have checked Advanced Options. I actually didn't do that. Once I clone this, I'll clone another project, and we'll try that Advanced Options then. Okay, now that I'm done, I can see all of my different branches. I can click on Current Branch, and it loads it up. This happens to be the current branch. The last thing I push to the online repo, this is today's date. 
I have the commit hash over here. If you look down here, you can see where I created branches and worked off of it, merged branches, etc. It's really cool because I can pull in changes clicking the pull button. I can push changes, so that sends stuff. Uh, I won't go into fetch, but fetch is like pulling but not merging. And then you can decide that you want to merge it first. So this is good if you're not sure you want it. It's one way of doing it. Or if you just like give me the whole thing where it's like, we're just, you know, throw caution to the wind. Go ahead and just do a pull. I gen generally do a pull. All right, so at this point, we've got this. We've got it work worked out on here. So let's go ahead and take a look at my project file and see if I have everything I'm looking for. So I go to downloads. I'm going to go on documents, and I should have that. Uh, there it is, Unity Scrolling Platformer, Assets. I am good to go. For many of you, this is good enough. You know enough about Git, you can work the rest of this. Uh, if you're if you're like me or you're more seasoned, that's all you need. You could end this video now. The rest of this you can find out on your own. But for those of you that it's new to you, um, how, how this works, you might also be wondering, well, can I connect to other accounts? Well, notice what I just did. I added a new tab. So each tab is sort of like a project. And when you have a new tab and it's blank, um, you have local, you also have remote. So we're going to click on remote. And let's say, um, and this is true, I have a GitHub account and I want to add the GitHub account. I just click add account and I'm going to click on GitHub and then I'm going to choose basic and then I'm going to put in my username. And then I'm going to click refresh password and then this prompts me for my password. So I go ahead and plug in the password. I click OK. If it likes it, it'll say authentication OK. I click OK. Now I have access to all of my 100 visions um, projects. So um, when you're ready to clone a project, you can just click clone. And then it's going to ask for some of this information. Now, I actually recommend you go to remote. If you already have it on your remote repository, you just need a copy of it. Then you can go look for it, and then you find it. And let's say this is the one you want. You can now just click clone over here and you can clone that project. If you don't do anything and you just pick it, it'll actually put it into documents, name it based on there. Um, my recommendation is you set this up so that you have a folder for your Git projects or that you organize it a little bit better into how you want to set that up. That's up to you. Um, you can figure that out just by clicking browse and changing the folder structure. You don't need me for that. So let's just do a couple. Um, let's do a couple edits to an existing project just to walk you through how we would do it. Um, actually, before I do that, let's create a new project. Let's say I want to do a new Python coding project. I'm going to click on create. I'm going to want to click browse. I'm going to create a new folder, and I'll just call this Python projects. And in my Python projects. I'm going to create a new folder, student XP status check. Say so it's a project I want to create. All right, I select the folder. Uh, I can try Git. Um, I can click, yeah, I want to do click. I'm going to click create repository and account. I'm going to choose my account. I'm going to use the GitHub. And then my owner should, it should just go ahead and do this. And then I'm going to put my information on here, um, checks, students, status, all right, this is actually a project I'm thinking of working on. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and write this here. I'm going to click create. Um, if it likes the name for the project, we're good to go. And now I can begin working. So let's say that's what I want to do. So I'm going to create a little bit of file. I'm going to create a file. I'm going to put it in there. I love this. It has just open explorer right here. I click it. I'm right in that folder. All right. So let's say I want to add a default Python um, template. So I'm going to grab a file and I'll put that in there and we'll work from there. Actually, another thing that we do a lot of is create readme files. So um, I'm just going to open up Atom and I'm going to create a readme file. And so I'm going to take some of that information I created on there, save it as a readme file. So I'm just going to click on here, um, add project folder. 
because I want to work on this. I go to documents, I go to my Python projects, I go to this project here, and I'm going to type readme.md. Oh, wait. I need to select that folder. Hold on. One more time. Select folder. There we go. That's what I meant to do. Now I'm going to add a new file, and that's going to be the readme. Save my file. Here it is. Let's close this so we're over here. And then I can put on here student XP status check. I can give it a name. And um, let me go back a step here. I'm going to click rename. I'm not really, I'm cheating. And I'm going to put here student XP status check by 100 vision sky. A little bit on here, something like this. Save my changes. This is Markdown. All right, so let's say I have, uh, I've worked on a file, I've created a new file. It has a question mark because it doesn't know what's going on here. It's not being tracked. All right, and as if you know anything about Git, you know you stage and then you commit. So I'm going to click stage all. There's only one file, and I'll put on here adding README. Now I have this push changes immediately to. I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to click commit. All right, so I've committed it. Um, it should show in master. Now what I want to do is uh, good practice here is don't put anything to master. Um, only anything in master should be deployable. In other words, it should be a working prod product that is uh, safe for public consumption, shall we say. Um, and this is not. So what I'm going to do is create a dev branch. So I've created my file. You saw me stage it. You saw me commit it. Now I'm going to click branch and I'm going to call this dev. And then I'm going to just click create branch. It's checked it out. Now I'm going to push my changes to the online repository. So I want to push dev. I'm not pushing master because there's no point. So I'm going to click push. So it sends that there. And let's go see if it has it on the online repository. So it says I did it. Let's find out for sure. I'm going to get this window open and let's just go ahead and open a new tab over here. I'm going to do GitHub. There it is. I already have it listed here. New repositories. Click on here. Bam! That's not the one I'm looking for. It was a very similar one. Um, let's click on my repositories. XP status check. Bam! There's the readme file. You like it? Right there. Bam. I got it. It's on branch dev. For whatever reason, it now knows me as Bob the Chicken. There's a story behind Bob the Chicken. I don't have time to go into it, but I just wanted to show you how I create that. I have the branch, and I'm set. I'm ready to practice this, I, um, and so I think we're pretty much good to go. I think I've hit all the main things on Source Tree I would like to hit. Um, I would show you how I could do a pull, but that's really not um, too difficult. You click pull, you figure out where you're pulling from on the remote. It's the origin. You can choose what branch. If there's more than one branch to pull, you can pull it. You can commit merge changes immediately, or you can click fetch, which basically fetches the files, and then you can check to see if you want to merge those or not. There's nothing new for me to grab because there is nothing new on there. I've moved all my changes here. But at this point, now I've showed you how to uh, basically uh, create a new project. I showed you how to clone an existing project. And I showed you how to add a remote uh, online source. So uh, I think I pretty much hit the main things on here. If you watch future videos, you're going to see me using this. Um, just because this will be helpful for my students that need more of a graphical look. So uh, stay tuned if you want to watch some of those other videos. Um, you're going to see them popping up midway through my Unity tutorial. So stay tuned for that as well. Thank you so much for watching.